Hi, I'm James, the author of two book series, Those 80s Cars and American Automotive Design Trends. In this car review, I look at the second generation Chrysler LeBaron, which is built on the K car platform. The second generation LeBaron had a seven model year run in sedan and wagon form and five year run in the coupes and convertibles. The LeBaron name was previously used as an Imperial trim level and became its own model line as a compact Chrysler in 1977. Total production of this second generation platform reached well over half a million cars. 1984 had the highest production exceeded 100,000 units. Three other years saw over 90,000 units produced each. For the most part, there was one trim level for the LeBaron. 1982 had a carryover trim level called Medallion, though there were no badges. From 1983 on, the Medallion trim of 82 was made standard and the Medallion name was dropped. Luxurious Marcross leather interior packages were optional. Popular options included automatic transmission, air conditioning, power windows, locks, and seat, cruise control, wire wheel covers, and more. Pricing varied widely over the years. The two-door and four-door models offered a low starting price for a Chrysler-branded car. Opting for a town and country wagon or convertible increased the price significantly, but these models came with more equipment as standard. Using a 1986 sedan as an example, the dimensions of the LeBaron are quite compact for its time. Overall, length is under 180 inches with the wheelbase at 100 inches. Width is 68 inches and height is 52.9 inches. The sedan weighed a very light 2,566 pounds. There were many powertrain choices for the LeBaron. Standard was a 2.2 Trans4 engine with carburetor in 1982 and 1983 and replaced by fuel injection in 1984. A 4-speed manual transmission was standard in 82. A 5-speed manual became standard in 83 and 84. Due to low sales, it was dropped in 85. From 1982 to 1985, you could order the optional 2.6-liter 4-cylinder engine sourced by Mitsubishi. This was replaced by a Chrysler 2.5-liter 4-cylinder option in 1986. Finally, for a big increase in power, a 2.2-liter turbocharged option was offered starting in 1984. The front-end styling remained consistent over the years with a waterfall-style grille flanked by quad headlamps. In 1985, the grille was modified slightly by placing slats and groupings. In 1986, the exterior received a modest update by rounding all the corners and contours. The front fender marker lights were also moved from the side molding to the corner next to the headlights. The rear and side profile changed little over the production run. The 1982-83 taillights displayed many chrome trim ribs. In 1984, the taillights wrapped around to the side and have fewer ribs. In 1986, with the updated look, the rear creases and edges are softened. Also on the sedan, the full vinyl roof is replaced by a quarter vinyl roof with a wrap over the chrome band. The trunk is spacious for a car this size in this period with 15 cubic feet of space. The center of the trunk is a deep well and a mini spare is placed out of the way and covered. Wagons could store 69.2 cubic feet of stuff. The dash experienced prolific changes over the years. Here we look at four analog clusters. In 1982, the gauges are large and square. The areas around the air vents, light switch, and other dash wood trim is surrounded by silver paint. This dash is a one-year only dash. In 1983, the gauge clusters change with the main rectangular speedometer and a message centered is added. The picture shown here includes the optional travel computer. The silver paint edges from 1982 is discontinued. In 1984, the dash adds a soft vinyl padded dash on the passenger side. Silver appliques returned to the areas previously edged in silver paint in 1982. In 1986, the instrument cluster sports round gauges. Appropriate for the period, Chrysler also offered digital instruments. The 1984 digital dash has full gauges and a vehicle information and monitoring system on the left side. In 1986, the digital dash is updated. Horizontal gauges are now vertical and the information center is replaced with a travel computer. 
Cars are not made like this today with this many seat choices. Here we're looking at the flight bench and the split bench seat options. The 1982 base LeBaron seat, shown bottom left, is upholstered in thick cloth. The optional medallion pillow-like seats in 1982 became the standard seat in 1983. In 1985, the flight bench seat style was updated with more contours to the seat back and bottom. Optional on the LeBarons was a luxurious Marcos package with two-tone interiors and soft leather, shown in the top right. The so style was updated in 1986. And there were still more seating options. LeBarons could be ordered with high back cloth bucket seats, shown left, or the all vinyl low back bucket seats, shown center, or the Mark Cross low back leather seats, shown right. The LeBarons maintain a familiar look with the Chrysler E Class, New Yorker, Executive, and Limousine. They are plush and quiet compared to their reliant airy sisters. Their size is deceptive. They look small, but the hood of a LeBaron is a pinch larger than that of bigger cars such as the Ford Granada and Mercury Monarch. The optional turbocharged engine made this car a sleeper with fast off-the-line starts. And with the many powertrain, seat, and dash options, one could configure a LeBaron to their specific taste, including superb luxury with the Mark Ross interiors that rival the New Yorkers. For more information about American cars of the 80s, and popular American automotive design trends such as the personal luxury cars and couture cars, visit www.those80scars.com.